This has got to be the coolest accessory for your ZV-E10 Mark II. Simply rotate it, and boom, I'm shooting vertical video. Rotate it back, boom, I'm shooting horizontal video. How cool is that? You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? Nate Swella here with Think Media. The Sony ZV-E10 Mark II is an amazing camera, especially if you are just starting out. However, after using mine for a few weeks, I realized to really maximize its potential, there are some key accessories you want to consider. I've got 20 accessories on this list. Some are must-haves, some are just plain cool, and others are smart investments that will grow with you even if you decide to upgrade your camera later down the line. Let's first kick things off with the essentials. When you first pick up your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, what you'll find is it does not come with a charger. In fact, they want you to charge the battery through the USB-C port here on the side, which is not convenient because you can only charge one battery at a time. So I highly recommend checking the small rig FZ100 battery and charger. This will give you two of the batteries that will work for the ZV-10 Mark II. And on the back here, we can charge it through this included USB cable or we also have a USB-C port here on the side. So it's highly convenient to take with you on the go and it will charge both batteries at the same time. And so in combined with the battery that comes included with your camera, you get a total of three of these NPF batteries, which I find to be the perfect amount for shooting all day. So if you're going to pick up one accessory, highly recommend checking out this small rig charger and batteries. The second accessory you'll need for your ZV-10 Mark II is an SD card. Now this can be a little bit confusing since there are lots of different SD cards out there, different sizes, different speeds, but the one I like for the ZV-10 Mark II is this one by Lexar. It's 128 gigabyte in size and it has a V60 rating in terms of speed. This is plenty fast for all the different recording modes in your ZV-10 Mark II, so you don't have to worry about spending extra money on a faster card. These ones work just fine. And on here on the Mark II, we have a new SD card slot here on the side, which we can pull out our second one. So the reason I really like these is they often come in a two pack for around $70, a little under $70 for two. So in terms of recording length, one of these cards at 128 gigabytes will last around two hours shooting 4K, 24 frames per second in the highest quality. So that's plenty of storage and I'd rather have multiple cards I could switch to rather than risk filling one up all day and not having a backup. So that would be the SD card I would recommend checking out. They're cheap enough and they work great. These next couple accessories are great if you plan on streaming with your ZV-E10 Mark II. The first thing I highly recommend picking up is a dummy battery. So on one end, we have what looks like one of these NPF batteries that goes into the bottom of your camera. And on the other end, we have a little wall outlet. So we can power our camera indefinitely by plugging this straight in. This has a very long cable, so perfect for your desk setup, making sure you can rig it in the right places. But what I like about this is it's actually going to extend the period of which you can stream. On the ZV-E10 Mark II, what we found is if you plan on using streaming through the USB-C or powering it, it'll cause a lot of internal heat on the camera and will cause it to overheat, which is not good. So if you get a power brick like this, this dummy battery, you can plug this in and it's going to kind of remove the heat into this power supply. That means you can keep streaming longer. So highly recommend checking out this power supply. It's not too expensive and I also like using it for my talking head A-roll such as this. So I don't have to worry about when my battery is going to die. This next accessory is also gonna help with that overheating by not using this USB-C port. Instead, we're going to use the HDMI port right here. So this is going to provide us a clean signal. And what we'll need for this is, since this is a micro HDMI, we're gonna make sure we get a micro to full-size HDMI cable. So we're gonna plug this end into our camera and the full end into a Another accessory, this capture card. This one is made by Condor Blue. This one's really high quality, comes with a USB-C cable on the back end. So we plug the full HDMI here into this end, then this end goes into our camera. Now there are cheaper HDMI cables out there and I have used some of them, but they've actually failed over time. 
I've had this Condor Blue one for over a year and had zero issues with it. So highly recommend checking this out. In order to set this up, what we're first going to do is plug in the HDMI cable into our camera like so. And then the full size will come out and go into the Condor Blue capture card. And then this end will go into the camera and we'll be up and ready to shoot high quality 1080p streaming for our setups. That's also going to help us not have too much overheating issues with our camera. The next few accessories are gonna help protect your investment. The first one I recommend is getting a screen protector. So this is a little piece of glass that you can put onto the back of your screen, just like you might use on your phone. The one that I purchased actually came with a total of three of the screen protectors. So in case one breaks or you mess up with the first application, you have a couple other to reuse right there. It's very simple. Just make sure that the surface is nicely cleaned down with a microfiber, use an alcohol wipe, and just make sure they're aligned, press down, and you're good to go. So that way, if anything is touching on the back of the screen, it's going to affect the screen protector and not your actual display. So that is also a great purchase. These are actually pretty cheap as well. I think this was $9 for a pack of three. So that's a great little investment. In the case you want to sell this in the future, it's going to help retain its value. So cool little feature. The next one I recommend is getting a lens cleaning kit. This one is made by Altura and this has a variety of accessories. The first part of this kit is a lens blower. This is fantastic for getting dust off of your lens and body. So you just simply squeeze it and it helps get rid of that dust. I always recommend using a lens blower first, blow away the dust before you use any of the other microfiber cloths or lens pens. There is a lens brush in here, so you can gently kind of get rid of any dust that remains on the actual element of your lens. We also have a lens pen. So on one end is again, a lens brush. And on the other, we remove this. This kind of helps get in there a little bit more deeper. And we also have some lens cleaning fluid so we can use that on the lens or on the back of the display with the lens tissue paper so that's a great little way to get any like oil or grease off of your camera and then we have these giant microfiber cloths and some smaller ones right here so very handy and you can use this with any camera it doesn't have to be the zv10 but I like to keep my gear clean, make sure it's running well, there's no smudges on your lens. So definitely recommend picking up this. Next, we're going to dive into a few different filters for your lens. So a lens filter is a, basically a piece of glass you can screw onto the front of your lens and it provides different looks. The first lens filter I recommend is a UV filter. Now this filter doesn't have an effect on your lens, but what it does do is it is a piece of glass you can put in front of your lens to protect it like we do with a screen protector. So this is great if you're traveling outdoors, you're out in the elements and you don't want anything to actually touch your lens, simply screw on a UV filter and that will help protect your expensive lens. The next filter I recommend is an ND filter. This is kind of like sunglasses for your lens and you can just adjust the strength by turning it. Now, the reason this is important, let's say you're shooting outside, it's bright and it's sunny. Sometimes if you want a particular setting in your camera, let's say you want your shutter speed to be one over 48 or you want your your aperture to be at its lowest, there's still way too much light hitting your camera sensor. So you need to put on an additional mode of exposure. So that's where an ND filter comes into play. So we can simply screw this onto the front of our lens. And if we turn our attention to the top here, we see we have different numbers. So number one lets in the most amount of light to pass through. We're only reducing the exposure by one stop. And as I turn it up, it gets darker and darker all the way to nine stops. So that's kind of reflected here. As I turn this, it gets darker and darker. This is what we call a variable ND filter, which means we can adjust it in various increments. Now, one issue with variable ND filters is they do cause some color distortion, kind of makes your colors look a little funky. But what I like about this newer one is it keeps those colors intact. So highly recommend picking this up. It's great for getting your exposure and all your settings looking great, even out in bright sunny days. The third filter on our list is a special one. It's called a mist filter. So most cameras and lenses today are super sharp, have great resolution, and that gives really pleasing results. 
but where it doesn't give pleasing results is on your skin. Sometimes that over sharpness look of these cameras can make your skin look a little less than pleasing. So a mist filter is going to subtly remove some of that sharpness from your pores and it's gonna make you look a little bit better on camera. I'm actually shooting with a mist filter right now and it kind of smooths over my skin a little bit as well as making this light look a little bit of blooming kind of halo effect. So it's a great little filter to pick up to add a little bit of cinematic quality to your videos. One thing I wanna mention about filters is choosing the right size for your particular lens. So these come in various different sizes. In order to tell which filter thread size you need, most lenses actually tell you based off this number right here. So on the Sigma 16 1.4, we can tell it's 67. So I have a 67 millimeter filter. So I will put that on, line it up, screw it on, and I am good shape. However, if you, let's say you have another lens that has a different filter thread size, I have this Sigma 18 to 50 lens and its filter thread size is 55 millimeter. So instead of buying a new set of expensive filters for each lens, one great thing you can pick up is what we call a step up ring. This is simply a piece of metal that will adapt the different filter thread sizes. So this one is a 55 to 67 millimeter, and this will allow me to attach my filters to the smaller filter thread size. This is a great inexpensive way to get your filters onto all your lenses. Now this next accessory is great if you wanna make sure your colors look great in camera all the time. It's simply getting this cheap little accessory called a gray card. So if I open this up here, as you can see, it's gray. Um, and what this does is allows you to make sure your white balance is accurate. Most people are shooting with automatic white balance or setting a preset white balance such as 5600 Kelvin. Now, even though my light is 5600 Kelvin or daylight color temperature, my actual room is actually gonna be slightly different. So what I can do is I can go into my Sony's white balance settings and I can make a custom white balance. And by holding this up where that box is, it will know what this gray is supposed to be and match my white balance. This is by far very easy just to make sure your color is looking great and you don't have to make too many tweaks in post-production in your editing software. Now on the back here is a white side. You could also do a custom white balance off of, but I do find the gray side to be just slightly more accurate. If you wanna pack away your gray card, all you gotta do is simply twist the corners and it will fold in on itself like this. You grab your little pouch, stuff it in, zip it up, and you can take it with you for your videos. Now we're going to dive into tripods and other rigging things for your ZV-E10 Mark II. The tripod that I recommend is the Ombre tripod from Ulanzi. This is a great travel tripod that actually does come in a few different flavors. The one I have is a fluid head, and the reason I recommend that is if you want to get smooth pans and tilts with your camera if you're doing that sort of filmmaking, then you definitely want a fluid head to help smooth out that camera shake. You can also get one with a ball head, which is pretty simple and easy to do if you just want a locked off camera shot where you don't plan on using camera movement. But I like to use a fluid head just to get extra camera movement in my videos. There are several different layers of adjustment. There are three clasps right here. We can extend our tripod way out and then clamp it down. And let me go ahead and set this up right here. This is with the legs fully extended, but if we do want more height, we can adjust this center column to get more height from it. As you can see, it rests up right around my shoulder height. Now, ideally, I would like this at my eye level. However, I am six foot tall. So for me, this makes a great travel tripod or if I plan on using this sitting down. But yeah, it's a super lightweight tripod, easy to carry around with. And we have this nice fluid head, which gives us smooth pans and tilts, which will be great for our camera movements. Now this has got to be the coolest accessory for your Sony ZV-10 Mark II. And that is the Silence Corner Atoll S rotating collar. Now that's a fancy name, but simply what you do is attach this to your camera, attach your lens, then you can put it onto a tripod like so. And what this allows you to do is if you're shooting normal horizontal video, you unloosen this, boom, you're shooting vertical. Boom, you're back to shooting horizontal. Just that quick and easy in a matter of seconds, you can go between shooting different modes. 
The ZV-E10 Mark II also has the menus where it now flips when you're shooting vertical video. So this overall package is a great convenient way to shoot both horizontal and vertical video. Now, one downside of this is it does block the lens release button. So if you wanna swap lenses, you gotta actually unscrew from here, loosen it, then change out your lens. So it's not super quick if you plan on swapping your lens a lot, but if you have one lens on your camera, that's 90% of the time on there, which I often do, it's not too big of an issue. Next up, we have the Sony Vlog Grip slash tripod. It's kind of a multi-functional device, but right here, it kind of functions as a grip. But in order to showcase this, let me actually mount it to the camera and we can use this thumb wheel screw right here. We can turn on our camera and this does control your camera through Bluetooth. So you can use the wider or tighter zoom rocker right here, which is super cool to see. We also have our on and off record button. So I'll go ahead and press that. And here I am vlogging with the Sony ZV-10 Mark II with this nice little tripod grip. We can also flip out the feet, put it down right here. So if I wanted to set it down and talk to the camera like this, I can also push down this button right here and adjust the angle for the different height I need. So it is a super versatile piece of kit. Again, if you have a power zoom lens like the kit lens, you can use that zoom rocker and it is really fun to use. So it is a little bit more expensive, but I can see some vloggers out there really could use the convenience of this vlog slash tripod. So we're gonna dive into a few more pro accessories that will really upgrade the quality of your ZV-E10 Mark II. But before that, I wanna bring on Craig for him to share some of his favorite accessories. So take it away, Craig. So a few of the accessories that I love using with my ZV-E10 Mark II are first, these wonderful Joby Gorillapod. These are the 3K legs. I love these for two main reasons. The first is of course, vlogging anytime I leave the house with my ZV-E10 Mark II. I'm always bringing my Gorillapod so I can extend my reach a little bit further out when I'm vlogging. Since this camera is an APS-C crop sensor camera, it's gonna give you a little bit of a narrower field of view than a full frame camera would. So this Gorillapod just helps me extend my arm a little bit further to make sure that I'm safely just in frame when I'm vlogging. But I also just use these legs a ton in my studio when I don't wanna set up a full tripod. These legs are great for just throwing a rig on a table to get a quick talking headshot or even a little product shot of something on my desk. And overall, these are just one of my most used pieces of equipment that I use on a regular basis. So I highly encourage you to pick up a set of these legs for your ZV-E10 too. Our next item is this Ulanzi camera cooling fan. So in case you're not aware, the ZV-E10 Mark II is very prone to overheat, especially when you put the camera in 4K resolution. But this little fan solves a lot of the issues that this camera has with overheating. So we did a video where we went super in depth with doing some overheating tests with this camera. And we didn't use the fan for any of those tests because we just wanted to make sure we got a baseline for how this camera would perform with no external fans or any sort of cooling units at all. But since then I've ran some more tests with the fan turned on to full power and I'm pleased to say this thing works really, really well. So by using the fan, we were able to extend our camera on and record times in several of the frame rates and resolutions that this camera was prone to overheat in. So I'll throw a graphic up on the screen just so you can see how much this fan really did helped. Honestly, this will be one of the best $40 you've ever spent for getting more out of your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. One little con with this fan is that you can hear the fan noise just a little bit when you turn it on to its highest power setting. So this makes the onboard microphone not very usable since it's placed right up next to the camera. So as long as you have a camera about three to four feet away and are using a good quality microphone that's positioned a little bit closer to you, further away from your camera, you shouldn't really have to worry about the fan noise at all. Now I want to talk about a few microphones that pair really well with this camera, starting with the Deity D4 Mini, which is actually the sound that you're hearing right now is coming from that microphone. And we've talked about this mic a lot on this channel in the past, and it's still a mic that we highly recommend in 2024. 
It's very small, it's very portable and easy to use. And this tends to be my go-to mic when I'm vlogging really with any camera because it hardly adds any weight or bulk to my camera setup. It also features a second input slot in case you wanted to send two different audio signals into your camera at the same time. So you in theory could record audio coming from directly in front of the DD D4 Mini, which is what I'm doing right here. But then you could also plug in a wireless audio receiver to capture a wireless audio signal from a second source that's away from the camera. So this is a pretty cool feature that the DD D4 Mini has. It's basically a mini audio interface, which is super cool. So overall for $50, it's really hard to beat this little microphone. If you do want to step up your audio quality just a little bit, you can check out the Rode Video Mic Go 2, which is now the sound that you're hearing out of the camera right now. We love this mic at Think Media and we've been using it for years at this point. This is a little bit of a larger microphone than the D4 Mini, but it does provide a little bit better sound quality in my opinion. Plus you get a cool few features with this microphone, like both a 3.5 millimeter output and a USB-C audio output feature. This is really neat. So you can use the 3.5 millimeter jack for plugging audio directly into your camera, which is what I'm doing right now recording to the ZV-E10 Mark II. And then if you want to use this mic for other purposes like streaming from your computer or even connecting it to your cell phone device, you can do that via the USB-C output feature. So that's really neat. You also don't have to charge this microphone at all. It just runs off of your camera power, which is really cool. And that's actually the same with the DD D4 Mini as well. So this mic only costs $99 USD, which is still pretty cheap, even though it is two times the price of the DD D4 Mini. But all things considered, for what you're getting for under $100, this mic is really great. So the last accessory I want to touch on is our favorite budget wireless microphone, the Hollyland Lark M2. So we did a test where we competed this little microphone against some of the best wireless mics out there, like the DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Pro Systems. And the Lark M2 held up really nice against some of those more expensive options. This mic retails for around $140 USD. And with that kit comes two wireless microphones and one receiver, and then a bunch of other really cool accessories. So everything is really light and low profile, which is really nice pairing with the ZV-E10 Mark II, which is a really compact style camera. So if you're looking for a high quality wireless mic that doesn't break the bank, the Hollyland Lark M2 is a really, really good choice. Back to you, Nate. Oh, no, don't, don't use that. <laughs> Thanks, Craig, for those awesome accessories. And that Rode Video Mic Go 2 looks pretty interesting. I might have to pick one up myself. The next bit of accessories that I want to mention is also audio related and I use it for every single video. Keep in mind, it is a little bit more expensive, but it will transform the way you use the ZB10 Mark II. This accessory is called the XLR K3M and what it does is it connects XLR professional microphones to your Sony camera through a hot shoe. If you plan on using this for a roll or podcast where you are using a professional XLR microphone, this is the simplest and most streamlined way to get audio into your camera. You don't have to worry about powering this adapter. You simply plug this into the hot shoe of your Sony camera and you have a bunch of different audio controls for making sure your audio is sounding top notch. And the great thing about this is it's not an external device, so your video and your audio will be in sync. This is fantastic if you're shooting podcasts, your audio and your video are already synced up, saving you time. Now, like I've said, I use this for all my YouTube A-roll. I just love that I don't have to worry about powering this adapter, worrying about recordings or syncing up later. So if you are looking for a great adapter that is going to get out of your way, then I highly recommend the XLR K3M. These next few accessories will really change the look of your ZV-E10 Mark II if you want to get really professional results, and that is by upgrading your camera lens. The great thing about the ZV-E10 Mark II is it is mirrorless. You can interchange the lenses, swap them out for different needs. Now this kit lens that comes with your camera is great for starting out, but it has a lot to be desired. Number one is it doesn't let in a lot of light. And as you zoom in, it gets darker. And I found the overall optical quality to not be as nice as getting some professional lenses here. But the first lens I would recommend picking up is the beloved Sigma 16 1.4. We talk about this lens all the time here at Think Media, and this is actually my first time actually using this lens, but um, I get the hype. This lens really does transform your camera and kind of gives it that full frame look. So by attaching this lens onto your camera, 
you're gonna get a number of things. Number one, it's a 16 millimeter, so you're gonna get much wider angle. You can get a 16 millimeter from the kit lens, but you do it with way more light in. So F 1.4, that lower the number, the more light that's being brought in. So that means you can reduce down the ISO and get a cleaner image, but it also means you're gonna get a shallower depth of field. So on this camera right now, I'm shooting at an F2 and I'm on full frame, but you can see the background is slightly blurred. So with this, you kind of get that same look, even though you have a APS-C size sensor on your ZV-10 Mark II. The autofocus is snappy and the image quality is really sharp and looks really professional. So if you're looking to upgrade your image quality, then the first lens I would recommend is the Sigma 16 F1.4. However, there is one downside of the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, and that is you can't zoom in this lens at all. It's a prime lens or a fixed lens, meaning you're just stuck at that one focal length. Now for some YouTubers like myself, it can be really handy to have a zoom lens because let's say you're going out on a shoot and you don't know which lens to bring, or oftentimes it's not convenient to swap out your lens. So a zoom lens can be really beneficial. The zoom lens that I highly recommend and I'm falling in love with is the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter F 2.8. And I'm actually using it right now to shoot this overhead angle so I can actually reach up and adjust, go tighter or wider, and I can adjust this on the fly, which is super helpful. And the other thing I like about this lens is it has a crazy minimum focus distance, which means that I can bring things super close to the camera and it still remains in focus, which is just amazing. Super handy, super fun to use, great image quality. It's a constant F 2.8, so unlike the kit lens, when you zoom in, the brightness remains the same across that focal length. So these two lenses are really my favorites for upgrading the image quality from your ZV-E10 Mark II. If you wanna dive deeper on these lenses, you can check out this video right here in our in-depth review. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.